In this video, we will be discussing adding surfaces, regions, solids, and 3D faces. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0302 adding surfaces regions, solids, and 3D faces.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. Also, note there is a completed drawing file. So let's talk about the three basic surfacing methods creating solids, not 3D solids, 3D faces, and regions, and some of the flexibility that these tools provide. We'll also talk about one of the simplest surface methods, which is giving a thickness to standard AutoCAD objects. So what we're gonna do is finish designing our house. As you see here, here's the completed exercise. And we're gonna give thicknesses to our walls and also add some windows as well. So as you can see, what we're starting out with is standard 2D polylines, as well as some lines and some AutoCAD points. For those of you not familiar with AutoCAD points, you use the node snap to snap to the AutoCAD points. So let's first talk about the solid command and what does a solid command do for you? So the solid command is not as intuitive of a command as the 3D face command or giving lines a thickness. But let's go ahead and go through the motions here. So I'll type in SO for solid. And again, this is not a 3D solid, this is a 2D solid. And what that means is that whatever your UCS is set to, it'll draw the solid, which is just kind of like a solid hatch on the plane that the UCS is set to. So notice how my XY is set to this line here. So let's say I wanted to give a, a wall height of eight feet. I'll go ahead and pick here first, and then I'm gonna pick over here. Now you might think you could go straight up, but you can't. You actually have to draw the triangle first and then begin drawing your other points to create a solid. It's not limited to four points, but in this case, that's what I want. So first I have to acquire this point here and go straight up and type in eight feet, and then acquire this point and go straight up and type in eight feet, and there's my 2D solid. All right, if I hit escape here and I hover over this, you'll notice that this is a solid. Notice that one of the nice things about a solid compared to just drawing a regular pile line is you do get some shading of some sort as this viewport has a visual style of conceptual. Let's go ahead and delete this and let's look at a much easier and more flexible method. Very simply, every standard AutoCAD object like lines, arcs, circles, and pile lines can actually have a thickness. So I'm gonna select all my outside walls and some of the inside walls here. I'll leave the areas where we have windows unselected. And I will go to the properties palette. I already have the properties palette up and hidden. So I will just simply move my cursor to the right. And as you can see here, I've got the thickness property, but I can set this to the thickness or height of the actual walls. So that's what you're defining here. You're almost defining a Z value. What's great about this is that very simply, as you can see, I now have walls very easily. So I always tell people, don't over model. If this is all you wanna do is create a conceptual design of some sort, and you actually just need a thickness to find, you're done. There's no reason to go ahead and create a 3D solid or 3D solids of all the different walls and so on. If this is all you need to do is see a visual, you've accomplished that very simply. Now what I wanna do is I want to define an area where we have this window. I also have some other areas of a window here as well. So first what I'm gonna use is the 3D face command. Now in this case, I don't need to move my X and Y because I'm gonna be using snapping to those locations. That's the great thing about the 3D face command is that it actually does go wherever you snap. And of course you can use O tracking and 3D O snaps to get to that point that you need. So I'll just type in 3F for 3D face. You can also type in 3D face. And again, make sure you do a shift middle click to make sure you're at the right location. And I'll simply click over here first. And with this one, you don't have to draw the triangle like we saw with the solid command. You can simply just draw it as you normally would. So I'll acquire this point here. I'll go straight up. When I get that point, I simply click. I'll go straight down, pick, and there's my 3D solid. All right, very simple, very easy. If I look at my other view, I can actually see it creating properly. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other parts here. I'll just type 3F for a 3D face. I'll use the node snap to pick there and go there. I'll go straight down here pick, and then pick. Notice that I do not need to actually define that last point. I can simply define the three points, and when I get them, it automatically creates the 3D face for us. I'll make sure I get to the right points here, and there's our 3D face. Very simple. Now what I can do is I can actually copy this wall here and simply copy it over to this location there. I'll use O-Tracking to simply get this right there. And I'll just press enter, enter to grab this point there, acquire this point using O tracking, get that point there. I now have those walls. However, of course, I need to edit them. So a little trick here, I could use the standard AutoCAD stretch command, or I only have two vertices. I can hold the shift key down on the keyboard and simply using hot grips, I can now stretch them 
to the location where I need them. Notice how it picked both of those, whereas if I didn't hold the shift key down to pick both, it would actually only do the one vertice. And there, our walls are done. And of course, I'll lastly here copy the top part from there to there. We're almost done, but what we'd like to have done here is I actually want to have the window taken care of, right? The window sill here. So what I'll actually do in this case is I'll go ahead and first change my layer to A-Windows. And now I want to actually make four lines with a thickness of the thickness of our wall. So I'll first move my UCS. And then let's think about this for a second. I want to simply define a thickness. So to do so, if I define a positive value, it goes towards us because the Z is actually heading this way. So since the Z is going into the screen or into the house, what I need to do is define a thickness of negative 5.5. So I could do this afterwards, but I can also do it before I even start a command by simply typing in TH. Now I want to enter a value of negative 5.5 and then press enter. Now I can simply start the line command. If I start the line command here, you'll notice that as I'm drafting this line here and close it, it automatically defines the thickness for that wall. Very cool, very simple, and we're done. Let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to create the windows for this area of our house. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a outside boundary of the wall, and then we'll create little pie lines for the windows. And then we'll actually turn them into what's called regions, and then we'll use what's called the subtract command to subtract out the windows. Let's go ahead and just first move our UCS to the face of the house here. So I'll make sure you zoom in to get to that location. And now I'm going to just start the polyline command. And before I do so, let's go ahead and make sure we're on the right layer. So we'll type PL for polyline and I'll just start snapping away. So I'm just zooming in and then picking, picking. Notice how the thickness is already being applied. Although we're not going to use it again, it's still pretty cool that it applies it as we're drafting here. We'll go over there. I'll snap to this point here. I'll go straight up, type in seven feet, then enter. And then I'll acquire this point and go straight up till I get the polar tracking intersection, click, and then C for close. And there's my wall. Now I need to create some windows. So now I'll start the polling command, making sure that I'm in this view here. And we'll just pick, 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 and then C for close. Again, we're using node snap as a running O snap to create our windows. And there are our windows. Now, what I need to do is I need to make a region out of all of these, and then we will subtract them out to get the holes that we need to get for our design intent. So the region command is in the draw panel, region command. You can also type in REG. You also need to be aware that you make sure you're in the right UCS to create regions. So I'll just pick all of these here to make regions out of all of them. It'll make separate little regions out of every entity and it does get rid of their thicknesses. So just be aware of that. Although it looked nice there to get our thickness, it's not something that we need right now. So now what I need to do is now I've got regions of all these different shapes that I need. Now we will talk about the subtract command. These are Boolean operations and we will discuss these in greater detail in future videos. But we have the union command, the subtract command and the intersect command. You typically use these with 3D solids, but they also work with regions. So I'll go ahead and use the subtract command. And the first thing you do is you pick the object that you want to keep. So I want to keep the outside boundary and then I'll press enter. And then I select the objects that I want to take away. Press enter and we are simply done. I could of course copy this over to make the other thickness of the wall here or draw lines and so on as we drew with this one here with this window area there, but we'll just leave it like that. So now let's go ahead and thaw all our layers using the thaw all command. And as you can see, we're pretty much done, except let's say we wanted to show some shading for the roofing. So what you can actually do is with AutoCAD 2012 and above, you could have a solid hatch, but that sometimes doesn't get you the best shading that you might want. You can actually create regions below the actual hatching and then use those for your shading. It actually makes it look very nice. So let me go ahead and freeze some of the other layers. Let's go ahead and make the roofing our current layer, and I'll freeze the other layers here. I'm also going to freeze the hatch layer so the congestion goes away. Now to create regions, it works the same way as you create polylines as they are 2D objects. So you need to take into consideration, of course, your UCS. So I'm going to put my UCS here. I'll make sure this is set properly and then I'll move this back down here and we'll adjust the watt. I won't do all of these. I'll let you guys complete that on your own. I'll just show you how to do a few here. 
So before I begin, we have to make sure we have lines that we can actually use, or polyline. Now if you look here, I've got a 3D polyline, a line, a line, and another 2D polyline. So I can actually draw an entire polyline if I want to, but in this case, I already have two existing lines. I'll simply draw a line to close off the other areas that I need. And before we do that, I just notice my thickness is set to negative 5.5. So let's just type TH again, and we'll set it to zero. And we'll start the line command again, and we'll just snap to these points here. And I'll go ahead and pick this one. I'll just redraw the command. So I'll make sure I get the right point, and there we go. Now I'll start the region command, and now I simply select the lines that I want to use to create my region. And I'm done. Again, I'll change my UCS to over here, rotate the X, rotate the Y. In this case, I actually already have a polyline and a line, so that'll work as well. I'll just type region, press enter, select my lines, and as you can see, you can very quickly and easily get the shading that you want. We'll do the top of the roof as one less example here. Pick that, pick there. Notice how my X and Y, always check these before you begin. And now if we check our lines, I don't have one there and I don't have one there. So I'll just start the line command and I'll draw a couple lines here because I'm gonna need these lines, of course, to recreate my region. We'll start the region command and I'll just pick the lines and there's our region. If you'd like to complete the rest on your own, feel free to do so. Again, just rotating the UCS to the different sides of the roof. As you can see, you can create surfaces to get the design intent across. From my layout here, you can see that I've already got my completed design and I have no 3D solids whatsoever created in this file. This concludes this video discussing adding surfaces, regions, solids, and 3D faces.